Today we've got a walk around of the one of the more recent projects here at Rock Your 4x4 is Nun Tons TJ. So if you are on Facebook or Instagram, uh, check out hashtag N-U-N-T-O-N-S-T-J. Uh, reason behind that name is we have eight lug axles, but they are from a 2013 JK Rubicon. That'll be one of the first things people notice about this Jeep is we have eight lug full float wheel ends on the front and rear. We'll pan up here to the front, full float lockouts on the front, and then their drive flange axle set in the rear. And this uses JK axles. So this particular one has a Dana 44 in the front. It has gussets, sleeves, Artec truss, Synergy ball joints, RCV shafts, 513 nitro ring and pinion with a factory electric locker from a Rubicon. The tie rod is just a house made unit using offset ends from rough stuff. Uh, the drag link is a Yeti high mount uh, from Steer Smarts. Hydro Assist is Redneck Ram and Redneck Ram also did the steering box modifications uh, to this one. You'll notice the uh, Genrite King uh, coil over setup. Those are 14 inch King coil overs using Genrite's front hoop kit. And then just some brackets that uh, go on the axle gussets there. Fox bumps. This one has a half inch Rockman body lift to create some clearance for some of the suspension components. This is a moto built front bumper with our limited edition red fair lead with a factor 55 flat link E with an older worn VR 8000 winch. Behind the grill there you can see the PSC cooler that is for the power steering system. We've got a combination of Synergy and Poly Performance limiting straps, uh, brake equip hoses made locally here. The links are two inch, quarter inch wall DOM. And the frame side is a inch and a quarter heim. And the axle side is Barnes Enduro joints. The center link mount is the Moto Built Belly Pan Link Mount Kit for TJs. They have this kit for YJs and I believe CJs as well. Panning up, you can see that Rockman half inch body lift right there. Moving on to the rear, this is also a Genrite King 2 inch coolover with Genrite uh, French in towers for the rear. So you cut out the frame, weld these in where you want them. It's got some nice little gussets on either side of the coolover tower. This is Genrite's sway bar setup. 
we noticed on our shakedown runs that it barely tags the frame right here, but not enough to cause any issues, so we're going to leave that alone for now. It's also got Fox bumps with the bump cans frenched into the frame. And you can see they go down there on the JK axle uh, with a little bit of a riser block from the factory JK bump pad. Again, Barnes Enduro joints at the axle. And Barnes one and a quarter Himes at the skid pan. Wheels and tires used for this build is a spider lock 17 inch bead lock. You can see how Tyler mounted those wheels up. He didn't make the stars match. He kind of indexed them to where they split the difference. So it kind of makes the wheel look a little bit unique. Um, that's again, that's a 17 inch aluminum bead lock from spider lock wheels. And tires are 37, 37 inch Cooper STT Pros. That one is the 1350, which is a low range E. We just wanted that width for that uh, nine inch wide wheel. Corners are custom corners that uh, Moto built cut out for us. And the wheelbase has been stretched seven inches in the rear. So with that, we wanted to still keep a Jeep look. We didn't want a comp cut look to this one. Uh, just like the way it looks when, when Jeeps still have full fender, fender openings but it just turned out really nice. Uh, this one also has a moto built rear cross member with rough stuff, uh, D-ring mounts. Those are made for like two by four, uh, just bump bumper builder parts. And that's got rigid ignite diffused flush mount lights in the rear. Excuse the lawnmower in the background. The shop next to us is decided to mow halfway through the video. We've got uh, JK disc brakes, and of course with that TerraFlex full float kit, it's got the large rotors. You can see how the rotor kind of is larger than the backing plate there. Again, limiting straps, Genrot mounts, custom brake hoses from Brake Quip. This one has an Artec truss as well. This is their thicker wild truss for doing link mount setups. It's not just the JK truss that has the uh, smaller narrow plate This is a triangulated upper and the rears have a little bit of an angle to them I'm, I'm looking straight at the rear axle right now so you can see that that lower link kind of goes into the frame a little bit but the most of the triangulation comes from the upper to keep it uh, without a track bar set up. I'll scoot under here so you can see this awesome parking brake system by Undercover Fab Works. They make this really cool kit. What I'll do is I'll go under the vehicle here and then go up so you can see this little guy. This uses a Willwood master cylinder and it hooks to the factory mechanism. So you've got hydraulic parking brake, but no line lock to have to worry about attaching or wiring up. So it's got a banjo bolt that goes in one side and then the brake hose goes back out to the rear axle. Really a cool setup. It only takes a few clicks of the parking brake and it holds it tight. That is a Generite aluminum rear tire carriageman powder coated black just like the corners and the rockers. I failed to mention that the rockers are metal cloak rockers, metal cloak front fenders with a rub rail and this is Moto Built's side armor kit. Comes up the side and attaches here and he's got of course our rugged radio 25 watt radio. The tank's been removed from the vehicle and this one has a moto built fuel cell. This is their 15 gallon unit with a, a TJ pump fits right back into the location and everything gets plumbed in. Got a vent line going up with the rollover valve on the cage 
And then of course we have the fuel line coming out as well as the wiring extended from where it originally was under the vehicle. Here's another view of the tire carrier and the spare tire. We've got the uh, ORO license plate and reverse light right there. This thing really has a great stance. We, we don't like to leave it like, we don't like to see it leave. We just like it to sit here so we can look at it. An awesome little stance. I think we measured belly height at like 19 inches, which is a pretty good number for a TJ. Uh, of course, this one, you know, has the seven-inch stretch rear wheelbase, and the front's been pulled out about three inches. So this one's got a, I think, a 103 wheelbase, and I'll show you part of what we did to allow that to happen on the front. We've got uh, TNT Customs front frame extension pieces, and what this does, it allows the steering box to be moved forward so you can have good pitman arm clearance. So you can upgrade to a four bolt steering box. This one's only a three bolt, but we put the uh, fourth bolt in there just so it look right. That's a Barnes JK track bar mount, just from their builder stuff. And you can see here we've got a parts mic blank pitman arm. And that was just drilled for the Yeti Steer Smarts drag link. And what this has done, it allows the axle to move forward so you have pitman arm, track bar, clearance. There you go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a uh, pretty nice setup from TNT Customs out of Wyoming. There's a shot of the Rugged Radio's 25 watt waterproof unit. And we use magnetic mics on everything. We keep those in stock. Those are actually designed and invented here locally in Knoxville, Tennessee. Manufactured, I believe, in Ohio now and shipped across the world. He's got a ram mount on his for his phone with an X-grip. That is mounted to the rock hard cage. And I believe, uh, yeah, Tyler put that cage in himself a year or so ago. And we have a S-pod with some switches. Only three of those are hooked up right now. It's currently front locker, rear locker, and air compressor. He also has a CB mounted up there for when we're with other groups that don't have VHF radios. Spiderweb shade, of course. The reason we mounted this fuel cell this direction was uh, anticipation of making a rack for a cooler and or tools, etc. So hopefully there won't be enough won't be any fueling issues with it mounted that way. We'll, we'll find out the hard way, I suppose. It's really a sharp looking Jeep. Simple, effective.
Golden Spike, Rusty Nail, Pritchett Canyon, Behind the Rocks, Cliffhanger, Metal Masher, Steel Bender, played a little bit on the dunes. The only reason he didn't drive it out there is just the comfort of driving 1,750 miles each way on the interstate with mud tires and a soft top on a vehicle that only gets 10 miles a gallon maybe. But it is a tough little rig. Check it out again, Instagram, Facebook, hashtag N-U-N-T-O-N-S-T-J. Nun Tons TJ.